In a world that tells you that productivity defines your life, where everything is streamlined for efficiency, we have fast food, we have drive throughs we have <laughs> instant messaging, and there are endless distractions with our cell phones and with all the pings and the pongs of the digital world all around us and the noise, my goodness, many of us and maybe even you are really, really struggling to enjoy the here and now. If you feel really caught up in the constant busyness and the go, go, go of life, then this video is for you because I know how it feels. That's why I'm dedicating this whole video to helping you relearn the art of being present. It is time to slow down and it is time to learn how to be fully and abundantly present in life again. Now, I have personally gone through my own trial and error over the years, ever since I first started growing up with social media when I was like 12 or 13. I have been trying so hard to figure out how to strike that perfect balance between going after the goals that God has put on my heart and then also striving to remember that this moment is all that I have. This moment is the only moment that is guaranteed. I'm not guaranteed tomorrow. I'm not even guaranteed five minutes from now and this moment is so incredibly beautiful. I don't do any of this perfectly but I have been through it myself and I am here to teach you today some things that you can start doing today to actually start finally embracing the present moment again. So let's jump right into five little tips and tricks to help you relearn the art of being present. So the first tip you guys is to go on a phone or social media fast. How long this lasts and the specifics of the fast is really going to vary depending on your needs, your wants, depending on who you are and where you are in life. This fast could be a couple hours long, it could be a day long, it could be even like a week long, a month long, it's really up to you. But the whole idea is that you suddenly have no choice but to be present. It is very uncomfortable at first, I can attest to this, but the beauty of it emerges after that initial super crazy discomfort that can be felt. I'm gonna give you guys some quick general guidelines and tips to start out on your own personal phone or social media fast. The first tip is to determine whether you are going to fast fully from your phone altogether, or if you're going to fast from all of social media or a couple like different apps specifically, right? So you wanna really pick specifically what you're going to fast from. The next step is to determine how long you're going to be doing this fast for. You wanna really decide and you really wanna to stick to it as well how long it's gonna last. Is it gonna be a day? Is it gonna be a week? Is it gonna be a weekend, right? You really want to determine how long can you realistically do this that's going to challenge you, but not to the point you know, where it's maybe unrealistic, where maybe you know you're going to need your phone for something. So making sure that you're being realistic with, with yourself and picking a time frame that you know you can stick to. The third tip is to really determine how you're going to make this happen. Are you going to actually delete your apps off of your phone? Are you going to lock your phone away like in a lockbox? You can see my lockbox right up here. Are you going to maybe give your phone to somebody else so that they're going to be responsible for it? The fourth tip that I have for you is to really allow yourself to embrace that itch to go back to your phone or go back to some of those apps. Stick to your guns. When you do this and you get over kind of that initial hump, so to speak, that is really uncomfortable and you ride it out and then you really allow the Lord to, to move your next steps and you allow him to lead right the rest of your day of what you're going to do. This is when the beauty really arises, guys. And this is when you're going to start feeling like you are so much more present in life and you're not at the whim of the distractions of the phone, which can really drive us crazy. And we don't often realize how much it's distracting us from the present moment until we've actually decided to set it aside for some time. Uh, the second thing that you can do in order to start to relearn the art of being present is to consciously switch from an internal to an external focus. Now I know this might sound complicated at first, but I promise you, if you hang in there, it's really not. The whole idea is about going from me-centered thoughts to other people-centered thoughts and the world around me-centered thoughts. 
So I'll give you guys some example of me centered thoughts. I have so much work to do. I don't really like what I'm wearing today. I should have worn something different. What else should I do today? Right? So these are just really thoughts where I is, is used the most and we're considering just things about ourselves essentially. Some examples of other centered thoughts. I wonder if my friend needs help with her homework. How can I show more love to my family this week? My friend has been super busy this week. I wonder if there's any way that I can support her better. Maybe I can send her an encouraging text. So all of these thoughts are just focused on the people around you. How can I help this person? What are they going through right now? I like their outfit today, right? It's all other centered. And then finally, some example of environment centered. Wow, it's so beautiful today. It feels so nice the way the sun is coming through the window. The kitchen feels so warm and cozy right now. The leaves look like they're glowing outside. When we stop thinking so much about ourselves, which again are those me-centered thoughts and we start switching our thoughts to really just noticing things around us, the people and the world, this is when we really start to understand what it means to be present in this life. So some steps that you can actually take, right? When you're going about your day, right now when you're done with this video, take some time and rather than thinking about yourself all about you pay attention to who is around you what is around you pay attention to your senses what are you seeing what are you tasting what are you smelling what are you feeling right are you wearing a cozy sweater oh so nice also just thoughts of of service and serving rather than serving ourselves so how can i be of service to them right rather than me we are going to be able to experience this life with so much more beauty and abundance when we learn to stop thinking so much about ourselves and we learn to start paying attention to the beauty around us and also the needs of others. For the third thing that you can do to start relearning the art of being present, that is to slow down your pace. Yes, I know that you are moving fast in life and I know, <laughs> I know I am in your shoes too. For those of us like myself, who are often caught up in the productivity mindsets. We're in this whirlwind of the go, 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 of pursuing goals and dreams, feeling like there's so much to do. It can be very, very hard to even think about slowing down. Please, you guys, hear me out on this one. Slowing down does not mean procrastinating. It does not mean sitting on the couch all day. It does not mean missing deadlines. It is about being aware of your little tendencies, your little habits, and how they are driving your mind out of the present moment. First thing to consider, how fast are you breathing? The faster that we breathe, the more our bodies are going to believe that we are anxious and we are stressed. And the more that this happens, the more that we are going to be taken out of the beauty of the present moment. I think we can all agree that when we are feeling stressed, overwhelmed, and anxious, we are not thinking about how beautiful it is around us. And we are not thinking about the gift of life. We're thinking about fear. We are absolutely not in the present. We are really living in the future. So again, I know it sounds crazy, but so much of this goes back to your breathing. If you're able to just start breathing deeper and slower, just pay attention. Are you breathing super fast to the point where you actually could be like hyperventilating? My friends, there's a time and place for that. And it is not when you're just going about your day. Another thing to think about, how fast are you walking? How fast are you just moving from one part of the day to the next? Just like I said in the last point, there is a time and there is a place for speed. If you're running from a bear, that's a good time to be fast. If you are running a marathon, good time to be fast. If you are, you know, playing soccer and you're running across the field, trying to score, great time to be fast. If we are just running some errands, right? We're, <laughs> I didn't, I did not, that, no pun intended, I promise. <laughs> if we are going on some errands, doing some errands, that doesn't even sound right. If we're erranding, there we go. If we are erranding, <laughs> there's not as much of a need to move so fast. And I think we tend to convince ourselves that there is a need to have that kind of a pace when genuinely there's not. If we're in the grocery store, there's no need to, to stress ourselves out and run from one aisle to the next. Maybe there is a place that we need to be in the next hour, but we can still move with ease and with grace and we don't have to trip over our feet, right, to get from one place to the next. 
You can trust and believe that everything is going to happen in its due time. Again, as long as we are not literally halting ourselves and telling ourselves, oh, it'll all work out, and then not taking action. Because that's completely different. We always want to be taking action in pursuit of what we need to do. But again, not to the point where we feel like we're being chased by a bear when there is no bear behind us. We simply are telling ourselves that we need to do things far faster than we really actually need to be doing them. Here's an actionable thing that you can do. Perhaps the next time you're, you know, walking to the bank, walking into the grocery store, I think it'd be shocking to pick up on how often we're looking down at the ground and we're kind of shuffling quickly and we're not taking the time to slow down our stride a little bit. Maybe look up at the sky, maybe look at the leaves, maybe look at the birds, maybe make eye contact with someone and smile. These are all of those little things that we start to do those that's an act of slowing down and just reminding ourselves that there's more around us to embrace and enjoy and we don't have to be acting like there's a bear behind us when there's not and life is short and we can enjoy even those little transitional moments throughout our day and kind of the third thing to keep in mind in this realm is how fast are you talking now this is a question to ask myself right now because i feel like i am racing through this video so Maggie, how fast are you talking? Yeah, way too fast. Talking fast quite literally takes the wind out of you. It makes us feel more stressed, AKA less present minded. Try paying attention to how quickly you are speaking, the pace of your speech, whether that's in conversation with somebody, answering a question in class, or when you're in a meeting with your coworkers or your boss, pay attention to how fast you're talking. And if you notice that you're speaking particularly quickly to the point where you're really not getting much breath, take a quick pause, take a deep breath, and return to what you're saying, and remind yourself you don't have to race to the end of, of what you're saying, right? You can take your time. Again, there is not a bear behind you chasing after you. This is just life and we can enjoy every little moment. We don't have to be in such a rush. And with this point of just slowing down our pace, I'll give you guys just some really, really quick ideas you can take as well. Try eating slower and savoring every bite rather than rushing through the meal to see how fast you can eat it. Try allowing yourself time to wake up in the morning slowly rather than setting an alarm that is only a few minutes before you have to be out the door. Also try simplifying your routine. If you feel that you are really overextending yourself, look for places in your life to start saying no, or at least start saying less of a yes. <laughs> I, I'm laughing because I'm like, girl, yeah, I need this advice too. Now, before we get to the last two main things that you can do today to start relearning the art of being present, I'm going to give you guys three rapid fire tips to help you become more present instantly. Number one is to express gratitude. Find something around you in any given moments to stop and to really thank God for. It could be as simple as the way that the sun is shining through the window. It could be the fact that you got to eat a delicious breakfast. Normally you maybe wouldn't have a breakfast like that. Look for things in your life that you're grateful for and express that gratitude to God throughout the day or just in this moment right now, you guys right here, right now watching this video, what are you grateful for? The next tip, seek experiences of awe. Look for the beauty around you, contemplate what makes you feel amazed, contemplate things like eternity, everlasting life, things like, not things, the one, think of God, think of the saints, contemplate the beauty of nature, and simply soak in experiences that make you realize that you are so small and that there is such a big world out there that is so amazing and inspiring and, and really is so much bigger than the little world that you and I are living in right now. Next rapid fire tip is to make meaning of the past and accept the future as what will be. Surrender to what was, right? Take that time to, to make meaning of what has happened in your life, trust that it happened for some reason, and then also surrender to what will be in the future so that you can embrace what currently is in your life 
And what can really help with this is journaling, processing things with a friend, spiritual director, or some sort of mentor in your life. Perhaps you have a therapist as well. So now the fourth thing that you can do to relearn the art of being present is to spend time in nature. Now, I absolutely love thinking about nature when it comes to being present and when it comes to being connected to the beauty of this life, right? Because nature has no choice but to move at God's pace. We can learn so much, you guys, from the gradual and unrushed journey which nature surrenders to constantly. So something that you can try, maybe move your workouts outdoors. I know it's getting colder right now, so maybe it's gonna be hard to just, you know, do your Pilates outside, right? Unless you're gonna wear snow pants, which totally you could do that. Honestly, maybe that could be fun to try. Anyway, side note, maybe you enjoy skiing and snowboarding, which are fantastic forms of exercise. Maybe you start doing more of that as opposed to going to the gym for a couple hours. Maybe this means strolling through the park when you could be sitting inside. Stop and look at the little flowers around you. This could also look like just making time every day to try your best to see the sunrise and the sunset, even if that's from your window. Now, the fifth and last way to relearn the art of being present, to remember that this life isn't about me or you, my friend. Society tries ceaselessly tirelessly to convince us that everything is about ourselves. We live in a very individualistic society. It tries to tell us that we should only be concerned with ourselves and what I want, what I think is best, what I need, all these I, again, me-centered thoughts, right? How could a society like this not drain us and leave us searching endlessly for how to fulfill those deep desires that we have. How could it not do that? Friends, this life is not about fulfilling what we think is best for ourselves, doing what we want. This life is about loving God and loving the people in our lives and in the world. This truth in and of itself should be enough to encourage a selfless approach to life. And guys, a selfless approach to life is the key to being present. That is it for this video. Let me know in the comments, what do you do to be more present throughout your day? We are all on this journey together. We are all ladies trying our best to thrive in this life, trying our best to go after the goals God has put on our hearts and also living abundantly healthily, beautifully. So please help us all out in the comments. Let us know what do you do to live a more beautifully, abundantly present life. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and let me know if it was by giving this video a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. I have some really, really hopefully fun and helpful videos planned for the future. For all of you ladies out there, I'm so excited for this journey that we are all on together of just growing to be the best women that we can possibly be while growing in our faith and living these beautiful abundant lives. I will see you all in my next video and please do not ever forget that you, my friend, you are so beautifully, crazily, and unbelievably loved. Please don't ever forget it. Have a beautiful, be ah! have a beautiful day. <laughs> Bye guys!